What, pro tip, would you like to give to the opposite sex? Let the past die. Kill it. If you have to. That's the only way to become what you were meant to be. I'm gonna just f***ing say it as a dude I would like to get flowers and chocolates from a woman. If you did it to get her attention and make her like you, she expects it to always be part of your relationship. Whining and dining. Romantic gestures. Back rubs. When it stops we feel like you are no longer interested and it hurts. I would imagine most men feel the same way as well. I usually see both parties kind of let the honeymoon phase fade away. One partner slows down on the flowers and dinner, and the other partner slows down on physical intimacy. Both parties are likely hurt enough to stop trying and it fizzles from there. Guys would talk to a slab of concrete if it approached them first. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. Stop making a big deal of me not being wet enough. If you don't stay hard we laugh it off. So stop getting annoyed at me for having issues sometimes. Stop rubbing the clit so hard. If you find a beautiful individual, smart and funny don't instantly assume they're off limits. They could be quite lonely. Applies to both genders. For the women out there, in most occasions you don't have to be worried about telling a guy you like him. We are starved of that kind of thing and even if we don't like you back, the fact that you said that will probably boost our confidence for the next 10 years. Female here. When you're going down on us and we're about to come don't go faster or harder or change anything you're doing. Just keep doing the thing that got us to the point of coming. Things get hypersensitive down there so it's easy to overdo it in those moments and kill it. Don't play hard to get. Also, sometimes your subtle hints are too subtle. Guys like me have such low self-esteem that it's easy to think you were glancing at someone behind me. That article you read about how some guys like a bit of teeth in a beach was f lying to you. Always salt your pasta before boiling. Please don't finger girls like you're digging for change. And cut your fingernails. Don't hint at anything. Period. We won't understand what you're trying to say or we will understand. But we ignore it because we don't want to look like a creep. Just straight up tell us what you want. Talk about what you like in bed beforehand. Tell me how I can make you feel better than good. Be open and honest about what gets you going. And let me get you there. I want to make you feel good so tell me how to get there. Unless you prefer I stumble around in the darkness. In which case. Tell me that too. Not a pro tip but. Ladies I don't care if I see your asshole during doggy I'm too busy clapping cheeks and making sure you enjoy it. Please don't smack my vagina. Or rub my clit like a damn DJ. Ouch. Don't lie to me. Whether or not that hurts how you think I think of you. It doesn't. If you can't tell somebody you care about something without them dropping you. They don't care about you. It's okay to be single. Being alone doesn't suck that badly and everyone asking you why you're single can shove it. This advice goes to those in a relationship that think it would being alone would be worse and those that are single and feel pressured to not be. It's worth it to wait and find someone you're actually happy with. Even if it's only for a night. Pretty sure this advice is good for people of whatever gender. But so is most of the advice I've seen in here. Yes. Being single can suck. I should know. I've never been in a meaningful relationship my entire adult life. I know what it's like to deal with that. This post isn't for people like us. It's for those people that are in shitty relationships. But don't want to leave because they're scared of being lonely. For those people that feel like they're being pressured to keep getting into relationships that they don't want to be in because people won't leave them alone. And for those people that don't even realize being single is actually an option. Believe me, I know all about how much it sucks to be single for years at a time. I've been single for over a decade myself at the moment. But I've also got friends in toxic relationships that are terrified of leaving because they'd rather deal with the abuse than go a week without someone to come home to and I've got friends that have went from person to person and have never had the chance to define who they are as a person without ever giving themselves the chance to figure out who they are as a person without someone else to define themselves by. Some men like me for example find all sizes of boobs and ass nice. I don't know how you like it. So just say it. Guys. 
keep a trash can in your bathroom if you ever expect her to come over a second time. Managing her period is hard enough without having to come out and publicly ask you where you want her to dispose of her trash. No girl wants to walk that shit to the kitchen. Talk to the guy you like instead of waiting for him to talk to you. Kiss the guy you like if he isn't making the move fast enough. Tell the guy you like what you need before it becomes a problem. Guys, please moan. It's not embarrassing. It's hot. Be active. I don't want to f someone who's just laying there. So remember, kids, necrophilia isn't just boring. It's also a crime. The entrance is further down than you think. Buy like a lot. Like you haven't even passed my balls yet. I'm about to come does not mean change the rhythm. Even though I may look like it, I'm not a homeless sexual predator. I am just an IT guy. No vaginal after anal anything. You will give an awful ooty if you do this. Probably mentioned. But don't be playing hard to get. Guys will either be turned off or just think you don't like them and give up. And if he does keep after you when you've clearly turned him down, that's not really a good sign either. This applies to both sexes. Don't play games. Be honest about your intentions with whoever you're with. This applies to both sexes. Play more games. Board games are a great way for everyone to have fun. Girls. Give guys more non-sexual physical attention. Head kisses and cuddles and hugs from behind. Touch us more. Head pats and treats. Wash your ass. Don't hit on people while they're working, especially if they're in any kind of customer service position. We're literally being paid to be nice to you. It doesn't mean we want a bang. You don't have share the same hobbies as your partner, just as long as you appreciate their enthusiasm about it and respect the time they dedicate towards it. This really goes both ways. Do not be embarrassed to use the restroom before bedroom activities. No one wants to pretend they can't smell that smell. Excusing yourself to wash is never going to be an issue. This goes both ways. Enthusiasm is sexier than anything else. Don't bring your f bachelorette parties to our gay bars. Damn it. If I'm wearing a button-down shirt and we are undressing each other, remember to unbutton the sleeves before you try to take it off. Don't accept drinks from strangers. Show interest. Not even sexually. Just showing genuine interest in me as a person is often enough to make me fall for you. To guys. We also love when you moan and make noise during sex. Obviously not over the top. But it's nice to hear you enjoying it as well. My clit is not a nub you need to sandblast. You bring a sandblaster to bed. I guess I'm vanilla after all. If you're in relationship, living together, sex can be initiated hours before through just the slightest physical interaction. I brief touch as you pass each other in the kitchen. A hug just for the sake of a hug. Subtle stuff like that. Passion. Really. My partner and I will just be chillin'. Maybe even bored as f Quick hug and suddenly something snaps and we'll lunge at each other. It could be once a month. Or multiple a day. Passion's weird and fun like that. Chivalry is nice but don't overdo it. We can tell when you're trying too hard. I had a guy nearly knock me over once trying to get to the door before me so he could hold it for me. For those curious the other reasons for him not getting a second date were because he was pretty damn off-putting during the date. I met him online. He seemed pretty normal online but when we met he was dressed badly in clothes that were too small and not age appropriate he was 37. I was 24. He tried to hold my hand while we were walking from the car into the restaurant which I politely decline. We get into the restaurant and he tries to hold my hand as we're walking to the table and I tell him no again. When we got to the table we started talking and he was talking way too loud. He started telling jokes and they were dirty unfunny dad jokes which I didn't mind the only thing was he was saying them way too loud. I asked him to stop because it was making me uncomfortable and he wouldn't. He just told me I shouldn't care what people think and continued. So I just paid for my coffee and left. It was too much to deal with. Milady. Let them decide if you're in their league, not you. We do not control unexpected boners. They surprise us just as much as they surprise you. The Mandalorian armor stays on. 
It would be nice if girls made the first move sometimes. It get incredibly tiring always being the one to initiate. We just want to feel wanted too. Sometimes we just want to be the little spoon. Even if you think it's clean, wash it again. Your fragrance should subtly enhance your presence not ominously warn of your impending arrival.